Hello, today we'll be calculating the uh, Z-score. Yeah, uh, if you're looking into normal distribution, then if you want to see where our observation is, then uh, definitely we need to calculate the Z-score. And I'll be guiding you how to calculate Z-score using Microsoft Excel. However, prior to calculating the Z-score, you need to have the knowledge on how to compute the mean and standard deviation, which is essential to calculate Z-score. Therefore, I would suggest for you to watch my previous videos, which I will provide you the link in the description. And I will also be providing you some videos prepared by other experts, which I think is going to be very useful, which will provide you some knowledge on the on Z score, okay, which will provide you some good background, okay, and you will understand clearly what is Z score and how it's related to normal distribution. So I think that knowledge is going to be very important for you. Z score is the relative measure of the distance an observation is from the mean. For example, let's say if the mean is 5, so we want to know observation, which we refer here as x, what is the distance from its mean? And if we compute the z-score, if the value is negative, it indicates that the observation is on the left-hand side of the mean. And if the value is positive, it indicates that the observation is on the right-hand side of the mean. Yeah. So we can calculate Z-score using Microsoft Excel and the formula is there where we use standardize. Okay, if we key in the formula in the Excel sheet, we should be able to calculate the Z-score. So now I will show you how to calculate the uh, Z-score. So this is the data from our previous tutorial. So in calculating the Z-score, two values are very important. Yeah. One, you need to have the uh, mean. And secondly, you need to have the standard deviation. Yeah, so let's calculate the z-score. So we're going to calculate the z-score here. Okay, for each of the observations. So these are the observation here. Yeah, so I'll just put here z-score. Yeah, and let's make it. Let's bold the value here yeah, so that it looks nice. Now, what I have to do is that I always have to put an equal sign. Okay, and uh, insert the formula. So the formula is standardized, standardized. Yeah, this is the one. Okay. Now, when you click the formula, can you see the formula has actually given us yeah, a few things over here where it wants the x value here, which is the observation, the sales. It requires the mean value and it also requires the standard deviation. So it's very easy for you. Yeah, because the formula will prompt you what are the values that it requires. Yeah? So let's include the first value here. Okay? It wants the observation. So this is the observation here. Sales. So you have to click a comma here. And then next, it wants the mean value. You see, it automatically, the mean value here is already being highlighted that you need to enter the mean. You select the mean value. Now, there's a trick here. When we put the mean value, okay, what we need to do is that we need to make an absolute cell reference. Now, what we need to do here is that we need to put a dollar sign, okay, in front of F and in front of 5 here, okay. I will tell you later why, yeah. Then, next, what the formula requires, the formula requires the value of, you can you see, standard deviation, it's highlighted. So, you just click on standard deviation. Again, we have to make the uh, cell as an absolute reference. So you put a dollar sign in front okay, of F and in front of 11. So we close the bracket. Yeah. And we click enter. Yeah? So this is the Z-score value that we have obtained. Now what we want to do is that we don't have to calculate all the Z-score one by one. Yeah. So we just can click. Okay. Can you see at the edge here? Okay. There's a small square box here. You can just double tap and it will automatically calculate all the Z-score for the rest of the value. So in order to do that, that's why we have made this mean and standard deviation as the absolute cell reference so that it will automatically refer to all the other observations. If you don't do that, then it's going to be a problem. Yeah. So if I just tap here, so I can see that it has already automatically calculated the Z-score for all the 30 observations. Now let's uh, make them into two decimal points. Yeah, we can go to format cell number. Okay, two decimal points here. Let's make our presentation look a bit more better. Okay, it's all 
aligned it's in the center so you see you will get some of the values here are negative and you will get some of the value here are positive yeah so the negative value why because the observation here is 100 so the observation you see the mean value is 175 so 100 is on the left hand side that's why the value here is negative yeah and if you talk about here when the observation is 176 the value here for the z score is positive why because it's on the right hand side of the mean value yeah and if you look into the z score yeah the z score is expressed in the units of standard deviation yeah so this is how the value of z scores are computed yeah so i hope this video will be helpful to you